Hello. So, Richard Thaler is considered one of the founders of behavioral economics, a new field in economics which takes into account human psychology, like biases and lack of willpower, while determining their decision-making process. However, there was a time when his attempts of including human psychology in the highly mathematical field of economics was considered so radical that his book would not get published. Now he is a professor of behavioral science and economics at the University of Chicago. So come again, what is behavioral economics? Behavioral economics uses the effect of psychological, emotional, and cognitive factors on the economic decisions of humans. Now, what is economics? Well, as you all know, economics deals with money. But not only that, it studies how we make decisions of resources that satisfy our needs. Let's consider one example. To all the men sitting here in the room, is it true that when you go to the restroom, you pee all over the bowl? Because stats show yes. But then there was this one genius guy who pasted a fly picture in the urinal where they are supposed to aim. And of course, all the men started aiming at the fly. Yeah, and what do you know? Spillage rates decreased by 80%. In terms of behavioral economics, this is what we call a nudge. And this will also be the focus of my talk today but more on that later. So now a quick quiz. I want you to all start thinking a bit with me now. Imagine this ship. There are 600 people on it, and there's an emergency. It's going down, and you need to save them. And you only have two options. Option A, with the one technology, you save 200 people. And with option B, you save one-third probability of saving all 600. So you have 600 people, you can save 200, or one-third probability of saving all 600 people. So think about it and decide A or B now. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, do you guys have your answers? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now the same story, but now two different options. Option C, 400 people will die from 600, and option D, one-third probability that no one will die. So now decide C or D. You guys got your answers? Do you want to hear the result? OK, so now let me ask a question. Who has A and C or B and D? Raise your hands. A and C or B and D? OK, cool. So <laughs> those are the rational decisions. And I'll tell you why. I know it's limited. So A and C are actually identical. Save 200 people is the same as 400 people will die. We have 600 uh, as a whole. So it must only be logical if you chose A in the first round that you will choose C in the second round, because it's the same. Same goes for option B and D. They are also the same, but they are just framed or worded differently. One-third probability of saving all 600 people is the same as one-third probability that no people will die because they're saved. You get that? You catch it? So it's basically the same, but why did you choose A and then you chose D? Well, that's what most people do instead of choosing A and C. This is one of the uh, few examples in behavioral economics that show we don't always choose rationally, meaning like in this sense, it's called bounded rationality. And this is also uh, called the framing effect, what I also said. Presentation of the choices have a big impact on the decision making. They influence it completely. So how did this all start and why is this so fascinating? Look at this. Neoclassical economics assumed that decisions are always rational, but no, they're not. This is how Thaler proved with other researchers that it's incorrect. Like with the framing effect. So now let me continue. These are two major um, influences in our economic decisions. We've had one, bounded rationality with the framing effect. Our example, save the ship. 
The second one is self-control, the nudge that I explained earlier, with the fly in the urinal. So, you see this? <laughs> this is called visible goals. This technique makes you aim at a, at a goal, at a visible goal, and makes you, like, because we all know that we, when we see a fly, it's so annoying, we just want to slap it. And this is also, like, kind of similar to this. Okay, so another nudging technique is defaults. This is pretty interesting. You know why? Because the Spanish government made it mandatory that every Spanish person has to donate their organs. Or if they want to opt out of it, they have to specifically say so. They have to tick a box and say, no, I don't want to uh, donate my organs. But people just don't do it. So net effect is, Spain is the highest, has the highest number of organ donors in the world. Yeah, so let me, let me explain again by definition what a nudge is. A nudge uses positive reinforcement, giving a non-forced push into achieving compliance and influencing motives, incentives, and decision making. Like a nudge is a gentle encouragement to make a person act a certain way. Now my question to you, doesn't work, doesn't work, okay. Can you think of a reason why you would object to nudging? I've thought about this myself, and I've, came to the, I've come to the conclusion that nudging can promote exploitation. Like for example, when you go to the store, there are a lot of sugary snacks right at the counter where it's so convenient to just take it and pay. You don't have the time to think about your decision. It also takes away freedom of choice because I did not say that I want uh, my organs to be taken out. So who assumed that I already decided that? And a bad nudge overrides a good nudge. This is very really interesting because if I like decide to eat healthy and I nudge myself into eating healthy, but then there's like these all around these bad nudges that can seduce me into uh, doing what I don't want to do, and they, and they can override the good nudge. And if this continues, and I always nudge myself, um, and I always nudge myself instead of critically thinking or having self-control, then I will always, um, I will always have like, um, I can always be triggered by other nudges. So if I don't practice critical thinking or self-control, any kind of nudge will just be able to take over my system. You guys understand that? Okay, because I explained it kind of weirdly, but yeah. Um, so all in all, nudging is used consciously or unconsciously in everyday life and has such a big impact on human, on human behavior. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was a uh, um, Richard Teller uh, like um, said that he he coined the term nudge. But I mean, if you read the book from yet th yet they were all at at the same time. They all came out at the same time. So th they were all uh, working on this on system one, on system two, on nudging, yeah. Any other questions? Yes? Isn't all of advertising just nudging? Like, wasn't this already used? This is a really good question. I mean, wh why do you ac actually specifically say it's advertising? Because it's really out there to, you know, to it, everything we buy, everything we do is based on what we see and what we are made to believe. Yes, but for example, when a guy wants to seduce a girl, he can also nudge her into it. It's everywhere. It's not only an advertisement. But was, so is it not like something which was already I can't hear you. Like it's, it's not yes. The principle as something which is used to coax people to do something, even if you don't want to, like, you know, something which is presented, like, like you said, yeah. If a guy dresses well or does a certain yeah. thing a girl wants to be with him or whatever. So this is always... It was not known. Like, you remember when I showed the ape picture with the neoclassical economics? Yeah, it stated that we really thought that people decide always in their best interest. 
We really thought that, but then um, Kahneman and uh, Thaler uh, proved them wrong with this, with this example, with the ship example. They specifically pointed out what, what the problem was, and they proved it, you know? So it's proven now. Yeah, one more question. Uh, so can you give an, uh, us an example of where nudging is used for exploitation, like not for advertisement, like we are all in the bubble, but like real exploitation means like human rights or like something like that, like killing people or massacre. <laughs> It doesn't have to do with killing the people. <laughs> you mean ex an extreme? It's extreme form of exploitation, for example. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Apple, Donald Trump. Like, I mean, why? Why is it like? It's. It doesn't. It doesn't like just because it's. It's. It's in every detail you can nudge somebody. So it doesn't like a little nudge has a big Im impact and effect. So it's not like the extremes are, are, you know, to be like taken so seriously because it's everywhere. It's, it's like a conscious decision, right? Because if someone wants to use the nudge to exploit, then they can use it as a tool to exploit not even just like the mass or a government, yeah. but the whole economy. So that's why I was interested from the economic point of view, that where the economy crashed down because of energy, because I think the talk is about it, but so I wanted to relate these two. Yeah, 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 sure. Like, of, of course, everybody wants, it's, it's, it's just human nature, you know? Uh, yeah, Lin? I think the exploitation is just a very negative side effect of a nudge. Like, if you can see, I just saw a video on YouTube where one guy said why it's easy to stay slim in Japan. And he just compared the amount of fast food restaurants to USA and Japan and the, how easy it is to access, like, healthy food. So, basically, he said that the nudge from that is in Japan you can get a healthy meal, a fast and healthy meal, very easily than compared to USA. So what are your choices when you go for a business lunch? You can go to McDonald's or Burger King or something very unhealthy, rather than in Japan you have other uh, restaurant chains where you can eat healthy food for a very low price. So basically, and the other thing is also, uh, does it serve our capitalistic economic machine? So yeah, that was my point. Yes. I can drive for the capitalist yes. economic machine. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think it's uh, an interesting, and our guests answer the questions. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you.